Hi everyone, this is Frank Westfall, and in this video I'm going to go over some laptop tips and settings. If you do these things, it will save you time and money because your computer will last longer and you won't have to buy new computers as often. Over the years, I've seen so many perfectly good laptops and other devices ruined from things that were very easily preventable. I've also seen a lot of settings that didn't physically damage anything, but still caused a lot of problems for the end users. So I'm going to go through a quick list of these tips and settings and show you how to avoid damaging your laptop and how to get the longest possible lifespan out of it. The first thing I've seen so many times is people transport their laptops with the power supply connected or with peripheral USB devices connected. And a good example is an external hard drive as well. A lot of people do something like that and then they carry it like this. The problem with this is that it takes very little force up or down, side to side to break this port and damage its connection to the internal boards on this computer. But if this is unplugged, it's really safe because the port's recessed. And then also with these USB drives, obviously the same issue applies. It's very easy to damage this port if something's plugged into it and you're transporting it. It's also true of these external drives. I can't tell you how many times I've seen broken ports. This port is really fragile and it gets broken. And if you transport this with the cable connected, you'll break the port for sure. Over time, you'll break the port. So always disconnect these devices like this and have them completely separate. And one thing that I've seen is people leave these in, these little dongles. This one's for a USB wireless mouse. And what happens is if something hits the computer like this, say it's in your backpack and you set it down and it goes bam like that, it'll damage this port because it'll break its connection to the internal boards. And in one case, I saw a computer where that went up and it broke connections to the power supply for the entire computer and the whole computer was dead. We had to modify the port and then resolder it very carefully and we actually got it working again, but it was severely damaged because this dongle had been basically pushed all the way into the computer. Whenever you're transporting these, pull these things out. You want your laptop to have a perfectly clean chassis when you're transporting it. So there's nothing that can damage the internal ports. And the next thing is some sort of protection. Please don't just carry your laptop around like this. It's definitely going to get broken if you do that long enough. I've had this particular laptop since 2014. It's nothing special, but it's been my daily driver in IT. I did thousands of configurations using this laptop as my primary computer to log into remote systems and configure networks and servers and also end user workstations. If I didn't have protection for this, it would have definitely broken a hundred times, but I kept it well protected. A basic level of protection is a sleeve at least get a sleeve for it. This is better than nothing. It's not ideal, but this is definitely better than nothing. And it's very slim. You know, you can still throw it in your backpack and it's easy to get the laptop out really quick. It doesn't take much time. So these are handy if you need to save space, but you still want some level of protection on it. But if you're really serious about protecting the computer and not ever having it get damaged, then I highly recommend one of these types of cases. I picked this particular one up at the thrift store for I think $5 so many years ago and it's a little beat now it's starting to fall apart there because I carry a lot of heavy stuff in here along with the computer but this has protected my computer so well over the years. I'll show you. So strap this in there nice like that and also this is the first power supply that came with this computer. I've never had to replace the power supply either. I've never had any physical damage to the computer and I've never had to replace the physical power supply. We're going on eight years that I've been using this computer now. These things can last forever if you take care of them. Once this thing's wrapped up in this bag, it's very hard to damage it. I can throw it on the table. I can drop it down, drop it on the floor. It's not going to get damaged when it's in this case. So it might be a little big and bulky, but when I hop in my car, I just throw this on the seat. When I get back home from work, I just throw it on the floor. You don't have to be extra careful about it once it's in a case like this. And I covered unplugging external drives, but if you have a little storage case for these, that's ideal as well. It'll prevent dust and dirt from getting into the ports. Another thing that's really handy if your laptop has a detachable battery is to just get a second one and charge it up 
and if you're going on a long trip or somewhere where you're not sure if you're gonna have a power supply, you just have two batteries. For Dell computers, they also make extended battery packs and I'm sure you can get them for other brands of computers. An extra battery is handy if you need extended power. And then cleaning ports. So these ports over time get dirt and grime and dust in them. I mean, I've seen some that are just like, they have food and stuff stuck in there and like, I just can't believe it's working at all. It's just like full of crap. If you store it in a case, you're gonna get much less dirt and dust and grime in the ports over the years, but you still will accumulate some in there. And to clean that, you want 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. You can get this at any pharmacy or Walmart or grocery store. It's pretty common. The key here is you wanna make sure that you get really high alcohol content, like 91% is ideal because you don't want much water in there. The water can damage the electronics. The alcohol is pretty safe because it evaporates really quickly and you also use it sparingly when you're using it. I've just taken this 91% and put it in a spray bottle. In these ports, there are pins that connect to the different devices. And for some of them, you can get a Q-tip in there and clean it out a little bit. For example, the RJ45 port. This is a good one to get those. I don't know if you can see those pins in there, but those pins get corroded and oxidized and they just get grime and junk on them. And if they don't make contact with the RJ45 plug, which is an ethernet cable, you can get intermittent connectivity on your wired connection. Let's just clean that out. And for ones that you can't get a Q-tip in, pull away some of the Q-tip and just make it thinner. So it'll slide in between those things. So for the USB ports now, I can get this thing in there by the pins. Just kind of do some of that. You can see I got a fair amount of junk out of there. Another common one is the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. This is a good way to clean that. And you don't want to jam it in super hard. You just want to be gentle, but just, just get some coverage on there. And then one of the things you can also do with this is you can spray it in there very gently and just have it upside down so that it sprays in and falls out immediately. Uh, even if you get some of this on your internal components because it's mostly alcohol, it's not gonna damage it unless you get a lot of it on there. If you poured this all over your computer, it'd probably break it. But I've never broken any electronics by using 91% rubbing alcohol. I'm just very careful. You can just spray some up in there like this and let it drip out. The key is to have this upside down so it doesn't drip into the computer. I'm gonna do that with my ethernet port as well. Just hold it upside down. And I've had some connectivity issues with my HDMI port in the past. It's been good recently, but I'm just gonna give that a little, a little bit more there. And if you need to clean the surface of the laptop, uh, this works really well for that as well. Give it a light run like this. And just wipe it off. If you're concerned about pathogens, this also cleans the pathogens because it's alcohol. I usually clean my screen with this as well. And it would be ideal to use like a microfiber cloth, something that is really scratch resistant but I've never had any significant issues by just using a paper towel. You just don't want to press on it super hard. And as you can see, the rubbing alcohol dries really quickly. Here's one of the biggest ones, liquids. I'm having a cup of decaf coffee here, but when I set it down, it's far away from the computer. Ideally, we wouldn't ever have beverages around computers, right? But that's not real. People are always gonna have beverages around computers. What you don't wanna do is set it right next to your computer. Just always give it a decent amount of distance. Because if this spills, it's not gonna go onto the computer, it's gonna go onto the table and then underneath the computer. And I'll have time to just pull the laptop out of the way, right? I typically go like three feet away from the devices. Like, I'll drink liquids, but I just always keep the liquid far away from the computer. And then here's the other thing. If you're using your laptop, when you pick up your beverage, don't ever pull it over the computer. 
never do that. Make sure you always just go to the side of it. If it does get bumped or you hit something, it's not gonna fall directly on the computer. If I pour this on there, this computer's toast. Just always set them far away from the computer. And just a real handy tip for desktops as well. I have a couple desktops down here as well. Notice that they are under the table. That's intentional because if this liquid spills, it goes off the sides and it doesn't fall on the computers. And this has happened before. I've spilled, it's inevitable. We're all gonna spill at some point. Spilled liquids on the desk and then I have a desktop computer running underneath but the liquids just fall to the side. If you have it sitting out like this or off to that side and you spill, it's gonna go right on the computer. Just have them underneath the desk completely. And then here's another one that I see uh, catch people off guard quite a bit. Some laptops have a hardware wireless adapter switch. And that just means that when I flip this switch into the off setting, it turns off the wireless network adapter. So people will be like, oh, for some reason, my computer is stuck in airplane mode or it won't connect to a wireless network. I can't get it to see wireless networks. If your computer has a hardware wireless network adapter switch, it could be that your wireless network adapter is physically turned off from a physical switch. It varies from brand to brand and model to model, but many computers do have a physical wireless network adapter switch. So just be aware of that. The last thing I wanna show you are some settings in the running computer. This is a really handy one. I'm gonna to go to control panel and power options, and then I'm gonna to go to change when the computer sleeps, and then go to change advanced power settings. And in here, you can do a granular configuration of your power settings. When Windows is installed, it defaults to enabling sleep and enabling hibernation on laptops. It detects whether or not it's installed on a laptop, and if it is, it sets these settings by default. I haven't modified these since I installed Windows 11. If I have this plugged in, I don't ever want it going to sleep. And so you can actually type in never on these and hit apply. And so I do that on battery, 15 minutes, that's fair. I'll leave that. And then hibernate. I don't ever want this thing to hibernate. And there's a reason for this. When computers go to sleep, and they're on a wireless network, and then you bring them to a different location, and then you pull them out of sleep on a different network, they very often have trouble recognizing that they're on a new network and reestablishing their connections. If you have a web browser open, you have a bunch of tabs open, maybe you have like a remote desktop session or a VPN, network connectivity to various locations, and your computer goes to sleep, and then you bring it somewhere else, and you pull it out of sleep mode, it still thinks it's on that old network. A lot of times it's smart enough to reestablish connections or drop ones that it can no longer establish, but sometimes it isn't. And sometimes the wireless network adapter basically gets clogged with junk data from its previous wireless connection and malfunctions. I've had this with clients over the years where they never shut down their computers. They're always sleeping them. And then they're going from network to network to network to network and eventually they're having really slow, inefficient communication over those networks, or they're not able to have communication at all. And it's because the wireless network adapter cache is never getting flushed when it's in sleep mode. And when you restart a computer, it flushes the wireless network adapter cache and it has a clean slate. So I personally never sleep my computer when I'm moving between physical locations. And Hibernate is similar, it's a deeper sleep. Here's how long it takes to shut down your computer. Done. All you have to do is hit that button. There's really not a good excuse for these settings and they can just cause problems over time. So I always just shut it down, start it up again when I want to use it again. And that will also extend the lifespan of your computer. A computer that's shut down isn't consuming the lifespan of the components in the computer. Every component in a computer has what's called a mean time between failure. And that just means how long it'll run on average before it fails. And if it's off, you're not consuming any of the time of that mean time between failure. So a computer that is shut down when it's not in use and turned back on when it is in use will last much longer than a computer that stays running, particularly laptops. Laptops are not designed to run continuously. If I left this laptop running nonstop, I guarantee you it would not last eight years. It'd be dead by now. 
there are a lot of granular settings you can play around with. I just wanted to show you the sleep and hibernate because those are default settings that for me, they personally really bother me. And another handy one is the display. You can just choose how long you want your display to be on when it's on battery or plugged in. That doesn't log you out or anything. It just shuts off the display and the moment you hit something, it comes back on. But just know that you can adjust the timeout on your display. And then this is one that I always configure. This is my personal favorite. Change what closing the lid does. These are the defaults every time Windows is installed on a laptop. So when I think of a power button, I think of a button that turns things on or off. When I hit my power button, I don't want the computer to go to sleep. I want it to shut down if that's why I'm doing it. Especially if you're having to do a hard power off, it's usually because your system's malfunctioning. You always want to be shutting down your computer from within the operating system using the software shutdown. So if you're having to do a hard power off by actually hitting the button, it means you probably have a malfunctioning system in the first place. And the last thing you want to do is have the computer go to sleep when you're trying to hard power it off. And then the sleep button, well, it's called the sleep button, so I'm going to leave it sleep. And then closing the lid. I cannot stand it when I close the lid on a laptop and it goes to sleep. And then I open the lid 30 seconds later and have to wait for it to come out of sleep. So I set it to do nothing on mine. As an IT engineer, when I would move from room to room or... I'm doing some configurations, then I have to mess with some cables. I close the lid, I set the laptop on a shelf, and then I mess with the cables. I pick the laptop back up and open the lid. I don't want it constantly going into sleep, out of sleep, into sleep, out of sleep. I might close the lid and open the lid, you know, 50 times or 100 times during the course of a day. When you're walking around room to room, you just close the lid and then, you know, you're just carrying the laptop. It's really easy to carry it. You don't have to worry about banging it on stuff or damaging the display. And then you get to where you're going, you just open the lid and it hasn't gone to sleep. It's still fully up and running. Those are my favorite settings on there. And finally, I just want to mention this because I already covered it in two other videos. File synchronization is an extremely useful and extremely handy and powerful tool. File synchronization allows you to have your data anywhere, anytime, on any device. I cover it in my Google Drive and OneDrive videos, and I show how to set that up in those videos. I highly recommend using file synchronization if you need to have access to your data, no matter where you are. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. I do try to answer them. And please hit the subscribe button for more helpful and interesting videos. Thank you. Bye.